The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. Today, we're going to learn about logic gates. Logic gates are the building blocks of digital electronics. The fundamental logic gates include invert, also called a NOT gate, AND, NAND, OR, NOR, exclusive OR, called XOR, and exclusive NOR, called XNOR. We've learned that digital electronics have two states, high and low, represented by a 1 and 0, respectively. A 1 is when the higher voltage, often 5 volts, is being supplied, while a 0 is when 0 or near 0 volts is supplied. Let's take a look at the first logic gate, the inverter, also called a NOT gate. NOT gates are pretty simple. They invert whatever signal they get. Input a 0, it outputs a 1. Input a 1, it outputs a 0. Set up as an analog circuit, you can think of it like this, with the switch being the input and the light being the output. Input a 1 high signal, the switch is closed, and power is diverted through the switch away from the light. The light is off, output is low, a 0. Input a 0 low signal, it's like the switch is open and power is supplied to the light. The light is on, output is high, a 1. Input high, the light is off, the output is low. Input low, the light is on, the output is high. While NOT gates have only one input and one output, the rest of the gates we'll discuss today need at least two inputs and one output. Let's start with an AND gate. On our AND gate, the inputs are labeled A and B. To show all the different possible states of a gate, we use a truth table. It's called that because in digital logic, a 0 equals false, while a 1 equals true. With an AND gate, if both inputs are low, zeros, the output is low. If one but not both inputs are high, a 1, the output is low. Both inputs must be high for the output to be high. Here's an analog circuit representation of an AND gate where each input is represented by a switch, and the light represents the output. If both A and B equal 0, the light is off, output is 0. If A is 1 but B is 0, the light is off, output is 0. If A is 0 but B is 1, the light is still off, output is 0. Both A and B have to be 1s on for the light to be on, outputting a 1. The next gate can be made by combining an AND gate and a NOT gate. It's a NAND gate. Notice how the symbol for NAND just adds the little circle from a NOT symbol. Think of it as adding an O for NO. So a NAND is basically an inverted AND gate. Therefore, its response is the inverse or exact opposite of an AND gate. Anywhere an AND gate is low, a NAND is high. And where an AND is high, the NAND is low. When A and B are high, a NAND gate is not high, but the inverse, output is low. In all other conditions, the NAND output is high, where an AND output would be low. Here's another analog circuit example to help illustrate the function of a NAND gate using switches. With both inputs zero, both switches being open, power goes to the light and it is on, output is one. Either switch being closed, a one, power still goes to the light. It's on. Output is 1. Both switches must be closed, A and B being 1s, for the power to the light to be bypassed, the light off, outputting a 0. Let's move on to OR gates. In an OR gate, if both inputs are low, output is low. If A or B is high, the output is high. Since when either A or B is high, the output is high, when both are high, the output is still high. Let's take a look at an OR gate as an analog circuit. If A and B are both open, zeros, there is no path to the light. The output is zero. With either switch being closed, a one, there is a path to the light, and it is on. Output is one. Both switches being closed, ones, just provides extra paths to the light. It's still on, outputting a one. Now for the NOR gate. Just like with an AND and NAND, a NOR gate can be made by combining an OR and a NOT gate. So a NOR gate behaves inverse of an OR gate. 
With a NOR gate, A NOR B can be high for the gate output to be high. If A and or B are high, the gate output is low. Again, we'll see this in action in an analog circuit. The A and B switches have to be open, zeros, for the power to go to the light, outputting a 1. If A is high, 1, power is routed away from the light, output is 0. If B is high, the same. Both switches being closed, 1s, still routes power away from the light. It's off, output is still 0. Lastly, we'll cover the exclusive gates, XOR and XNOR. To get the symbols for XOR and XNOR, we need an X for exclusive. Take both symbols and add a line across both inputs, Xing them out. An exclusive OR or XOR gate is high only when either input is exclusively high. If the inputs are the same, both low or both high, an XOR outputs low, zero. If the inputs are different, the output is high, one. An exclusive NOR or XNOR gate is the inverse of an XOR gate. An XNOR gate requires the inputs to be the same for it to output 1, high. We can use the three-way switch circuit we made in a previous episode to demonstrate the function of an XNOR gate. With both switches low, zeros, the light is on. Output is high, a 1. If both switches are high, 1s, the light is on. Output is high, a 1. If the switches are flipped opposite each other, the light is off, output is zero. In the three-way switch episode, I showed an alternate way of wiring the circuit that yields the opposite results, just like an XOR gate. If the lights are flipped opposite each other, the light is on, a high output of one. If the lights are both flipped on or off, the light is off, a low output of zero. Logic gates come packaged in ICs with multiple gates in each chip and usually have at least one pin for input voltage and one pin for ground. Since NOT gates only ever have one input and one output, that leaves room for six NOT gates in a 14-pin IC. So these chips are called hex inverters. XOR and XNOR gates always come with only two inputs. However, AND, NAND, and NOR gates often come with more than two inputs. For these ICs, the logic of each gate remains the same. In these AND gates, all three or four inputs of a single gate must be high for the output to be high. If none or only some are high, the output is low. With these NAND gates, if none or some of the inputs of a gate are high, the output is high. But if all inputs are high, the output is low. With these NOR gates, all three or all four inputs of a single gate must be low for the output to be high. If any or all of the inputs of a single gate within the chip are high, then the output of that gate will be low. Well, hopefully that gave you a better understanding of logic gates. Working with logic and digital circuits can get confusing very quickly, so take your time. If you still have questions about logic gates, I'd love to help you. Let's work it out together. You can find me on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Live long and happy learning. <laughs>